Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Nada Youssef, and today we're talking with our featured expert about natural birth. Even though it may cause some discomfort with our epidural, many women are more satisfied with the full experience when going natural. In the United States, approximately 39% of women have vaginal birth, then they do so without any epidural. And some of you might be wondering why. So to answer some of these questions and more, today we have with us Cleveland Clinic certified nurse, midwife, Jessica Costa. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. And Thanks if for you having me. Sure, and you wanna take a moment to just introduce <laughs> yourself to our viewers and listeners? I sure can. My name is Jessica Costa. I am a certified nurse midwife with the Cleveland Clinic at the Worcester Women's Health Center. Great. And how long have you been doing this? I have been a registered nurse for 10 years, and great. I have been a certified nurse midwife for five years. And Amazing. I've been with the clinic for the last year. Great. It's Excellent. Been great. Very, very happy to have you here. Thank you. And before we begin, please remember this is for informational purposes only, and it's not intended to replace your own physician's advice. Okay. So um, I just want to start with midwifery. <laughs> what is a midwife? Mm -hmm. So a certified nurse midwife, um, the word midwife means with woman. Um, a nurse midwife is first a registered nurse, so has a bachelor's degree in nursing, and then goes on to receive a master's degree in nursing and specializes in midwifery. Mm -hmm. um, in Ohio, we are recognized as one of the four advanced practice registered nurses. Wow, wow. So you have to have a master's yes. to be a midwife? To be I a nurse midwife, no yep. Oh, a nurse midwife, yep. okay, great. And nurse practitioners are all trained as midwives then? Is that how it starts? So it actually does not. Okay. Um, there are four types of advanced practice registered nurses mm -hmm. in the state of Ohio. There are clinical nurse specialists, um, uh, uh, nurse practitioners, certified registered nurse anesthetist, and mm -hmm. certified nurse midwives. Wow. So we are in that master's prepared um, nursing field, but separate from a nurse practitioner. Yeah. We specialize in the midwifery portion. Oh, excellent. Great. Yeah. So why should someone consider getting a midwife? What's special about midwives? I like to p tell my patients we're cooler. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. Obviously, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, no, it's just a different, it's in our training. Sure. So midwifery really likes to um, look at the person as a whole. So it's holistic care. Um, we specialize in low risk, normal. Um, we uh, specialize in low risk, low risk pregnancies, labor, and birth. Um, and that's where the midwifery portion comes into play. Um, but we also are able to perform well women exams, um, gynecological mm -hmm. problems, we're able to help women with that, sexually transmitted infection testing and treatment, mm -hmm. as well as some common health problems like a urinary tract infection or a yeast infection, we can help women with that. So after childbirth, they're not done with you. They you are. You're still seeing the patients. Absolutely. So Absolutely. preconception okay. yeah. um, care to help them become their m the most healthiest woman that they can be prior to becoming pregnant. Okay. We can see them during the pregnancy. Um, we can help support them during the labor. Mm -hmm. We can actually attend the birth of the baby for right. them. And then in the postpartum period with breastfeeding support, um, birth control, and then from teens beyond menopause. Wow, so you can prescribe medication and everything. Yes, we have prescription authority in the state of Ohio. Wow, excellent, yeah. great. Well, let's talk about natural birth versus epidural. Okay. What to expect, both benefits and risks maybe for both? Both, yeah. When we look at natural birth, that word means something different to um, different women. Yes. In certain areas, uh, it may be completely different from another area of practice, which I have been able to experience. Yeah. So for some, natural birth means completely unmedicated, nothing at all during the um, labor and birth. Mm -hmm. For others, it may mean that they are just not getting an epidural. So they may have some of the other interventions or other pain management options, mm -hmm. but the epidural is just not part of their birth plan. And then for others, a natural birth just means that it's a vaginal birth and not a cesarean section. Yeah. So kind of to clarify <laughs> that, because it really means something different to different women. Yeah. For the true. purposes of today, I'm gonna focus on natural birth, meaning not having an epidural, okay. just kind of separating those there, sure. um, if that's okay. When we look at natural birth for women, um, you know, midwifery care specializes in low risk normal. Mm -hmm. And when we're able to support women through this process, we really are focusing on helping them have the most optimal um, care during the pregnancy and supporting their body for a physiological, a physiological process. Sure. Midwives view birth as normal, a normal process that our body's designed to do and not a medical condition. Sure. And that's where our specialty comes in, is um, the art of midwifery, knowing how to help support these women through the different stages of labor. Okay. 
So with, with midwifery care and the natural birth, we want women to come in um, to labor in active labor, which is around six centimeters for most women. Okay. Um, they're able to labor at home, um, to be comfortable in that environment for themselves, come in when they're about six centimeters. How do they know they're at six centimeters? How do they know? I know. So <laughs> <laughs> How would I have no idea? <laughs> exactly. So that's something we're able to help train, you know, help work with them um, during the pregnancy to know when active labor is. Um, for women that are first time moms, I like to give them the um, recommendation of 511. So when contractions are about every five minutes mm. from the beginning of a contraction to the beginning of the next contraction, okay. the contraction itself is about a full minute long okay. for about an hour. Okay. Or when they're becoming really uncomfortable, the contractions are becoming um, harder to cope with. That's about a time to give your midwife um, a call and let her know that, you know, things are changing. Yeah. And yeah. for a mom that's already had a child previously, um, I recommend giving me a call about eight to ten, ten uh, minutes apart to the contractions themselves mm. because their labors typically tend to go a little bit faster. Wow. Wow. So, so then you do would call your office to let you know that <coughs> they think they're. Yes. So we have like during the office hours, they're able to call our office and mm -hmm. let us know. Sometimes I'm able to bring them in sure. um, and see how things are going, um, if they're truly in labor or um, if they can still continue to labor outside of the hospital. Sure. Um, but if it's after hours, they're able to call um, our answering service or um, the answering service that gets the phone calls for us and then they can give us a call and, and I can talk to them in triage. Yeah. Okay. I personally like to talk to my patients because I'm yeah. able to like sometimes hear their contraction and then breathing through it and yeah. be like, okay, it's time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and time as a mom, yeah. it, it feels, um, it gives you such comfort when you're yeah. talking to your provider yeah. on the phone, not just like a nurse, it's mm -hmm. someone that's going to uh, tell them about mm -hmm. your contra contractions. Okay, so um, some of the natural birth options for those who don't know, um, can you give us uh, some of the techniques that you that you would work with? Yeah, so with natural birth, um, the thing that I really like to start wi with is upright movement. So frequent movement, upright positioning, um, the woman being able to get in the position that's most comfortable for her. Um, laying in bed for a lot of women during labor is not the best thing for them. Yeah. Um, it's really uncomfortable. They're not able to cope well during the contraction. So that frequent movement allows the baby to really navigate into the pelvis for optimal fetal positioning mm -hmm. for the labor in delivery. So positioning, movement is good. Um, midwives are able to um, use what's called um, intermittent fetal monitoring. So they don't have to be hooked up to the monitor, monitor continuously okay. with those belts that right, go around your right. belly. Um, and evidence shows those are just as effective at monitoring the baby and are safe. So we're able to, with a handheld Doppler, just kind of listen to baby mm -hmm. at certain points um, before, during, and after the contraction yeah. at, inter at certain intervals for them. So that's another great option for women to keep them mobile and not hooked up yes. to anything. Um, the birthing ball yeah. uh, is a great pain management technique. Um, that movement, kind of some deep hip circles on the ball, um, helps baby navigate that pelvis again, as well as can provide comfort for sure. the woman sure. during the labor. Um, massage therapy. So just sometimes women just need like this gentle rub, this gentle yeah. massage. Um, I, this is a time during the labor that I'm able to get that support person, their partner, their husband, a friend, a doula involved in just, you know, showing them just that gentle technique, um, how to really help that woman cope is sure. a great option. Sure. Um, water immersion. So getting in the um, shower is great for women mm -hmm. for support during labor, for pain relief, and then submerging in a warm tub during the labor mm -hmm. really can help um, release those endorphins, cause them to be buoyant. buoyant. So all of those, um, all of the pressure is really uh, relaxed. They're able right. to really relax. I find that women, when they get in the tub, I get this big, Oh my gosh, the All the side. Yes, is it's great. So, <laughs> I, I mean, that's exactly what yeah. I always see happen. Sure. So, um, that's another great pain management option. So, these them. are things you could do at home before you even show up, right? To you the you can do those at home, but in the hospital, you those are techniques well. yep, to okay. help them. Um, and we're able, midwives during natural birth um, are able to help guide them. So, sometimes they might be in the bed, maybe on their hands and knees, yeah. laboring. And yeah. I'll say, you know what? Why don't we get in this next position? Because I really want them frequently every 20 to 30 minutes yeah. to move. And sometimes they'll say, I don't want to, I'm comfortable. And I'll say, let's just try. It's gentle <laughs> coaching. And yes. they'll be like, oh, this is so much better. Wow. Or no, I need to go back. Sure, sure. <laughs> so it's great to really, it's the art of midwifery of, of knowing like what technique, what movement, what motion, sure. um, what pain management option might help them sure. better support. 
Um, so those are some natural things we can try. And then other options we have are um, pain medications. So okay. we can give them um, narcotics through an IV, an intravenous catheter. This if is they still would want natural birth for some, some yep. pain relief. Some pain okay. relief. So if those other techniques aren't working for them mm -hmm. and they would like to go to another option, sure. we can give them um, IV pain medication. Mm -hmm. So I tell women it doesn't take the pain away. Right. It just kind of takes that edge off. Sure. So they're able to kind of relax in between the contractions more effectively. And that peak of the contraction is probably where they're waking up a yes. little more, yeah. feeling that, and then they're able to kind of relax back to sleep. And they're still mobile. They're still able to get up there. Is they still able to move usually, positions? Usually they can move positions in the bed, but normally we have them kind of still stay okay. in the bed, kind of resting and relaxing. And it, right. for most women, maybe one to two hours of relief okay. they get with that. Okay. Um, so that part of it, they're able to rest in the bed sure. for a duration of time. So as a midwife, you have a patient, um, uh, a mother that you're tending to. Are you with her the whole time she's in labor? For women, yeah, and so that depends on their preference as well. Okay. Um, I tell my patients that as soon as I enter the room and they're in labor, um, I say, I get real bossy. <laughs> I tell them, so, no, I tell them. I say, you know what, this is your labor. Yeah. This is your birth. So what are, you have choices. Yeah. I can be at your bedside from active labor about six centimeters with okay. them, yeah. helping labor support them, um, giving them those recommendations, the massage, um, mm. really coaching them through. Or I can be out just kind of monitoring the baby, um, sitting out and waiting for them to have me come in yeah. uh, at their request, or if they just want a presence in the room. Sometimes sure. I've honestly just kind of sat there and will just coach them, like, you're doing a really great job, nice job, keep breathing, deep breath, it's almost over, you're almost there, you did it, good job. Yeah. You know, just kind of coaching them through, not actively Absolutely. doing any management, sure. but just a a presence yes. for them. Yes. So I really like my patients to make that call, sure. what they're wanting. And oftentimes it's um, getting closer to the end too that they're like, okay, you're not allowed to leave the room, yeah. stay. <laughs> you're, you're not <laughs> so going they, anywhere. Yeah, you're not that going anywhere. Exactly. It's like I, I right get there. terrified, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's, and that's their choice too. So that's a great um, part of midwifery care is we are able to support women during the labor portion of it and not just the delivery itself. Sure, sure. Okay, mm -hmm. and then there are people like me that went full epidural, didn't do anything natural. Let's talk about some of the risks um, to, to, to epidural or benefits. Or I benefit. know the benefits, but yeah. <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are some women that come in and they don't have any desire for natural yeah. birth. Um, and I say it's really a mindset going into natural birth, but with an epidural itself, um, some women, that is their choice and we're able to fully support them with that option. The benefit is that, you know, um, an epidural is for those that do not, are not aware, don't know, um, it is a catheter that goes into the epidural space mm -hmm. and then medication is instilled into the spine That's that fine. kind of numbs from the waist down. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have as much mobility with their legs um, and that pain is really relieved sure. um, during that time. Sometimes they can still feel pressure, maybe a little bit of pain, mm -hmm. but definitely not to the extent that they would have previously. And those are inserted by a um, anesthesiologist or a CRNA that okay. another advanced practice nurse, yes, a yes. certified registered nurse anesthetist okay. is able to do that. Um, so much benefit. Um, the risk with an epidural could be potentially that um, infection at the insertion site, uh, bleeding if um, it is inserted the wrong, incorrectly, um, back pain mm -hmm. with that. Um, also sometimes a, mo a mother's blood pressure can drop a little bit okay. and cause some variation in the baby's heart rate, um, which we are able to help um, correct with medications if needed to the mother. Sure, sure. Um, as well. So, um, with the risks of epidural, um, you know, I, I think about my own mm -hmm. uh, experience. The contraction, you're not feeling the contraction. Mm -hmm. This is when you are, um, you have the support system telling you to push. Is this an advantage for natural birth versus epidural to feel the contraction for pushing? Absolutely. So with natural birth, you know, women typically will get that urge to push. Um, they're able to work along with their body. For some, it can shorten that pushing duration. Sure, sure. The epidural can... Uh, make pushing um, for some uh, be a little bit of a longer process. Okay. Um, and like you said, we're able to coach them along 
it might take them just a minute. I'll say sometimes now you're getting your groove. You know, right. now you're understanding um, what that feeling is, where to push, and we're able to really coach them along with that during that pushing phase um, for sure. So it can it can take a little bit longer, but natural birth, they definitely can feel um, those pushing efforts. Now with recovery, it seems to be completely different with epidural versus natural. Mm -hmm. uh, can we talk a little bit about recovery? Yeah, so after a natural birth, you know, the woman is free. Once they've been recovered, the mom is stable, the baby's stable. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to breastfeed their baby if that's their choice and mom is really able to get up and move around right. freely right. after there's not like a duration she needs to really stay in the bed um, as long as she's medically stable with the epidural you know the medication has to wear off um, their legs they have to make sure that they're able to stand um, safely so it is recovery is a little bit longer, it's with, longer the with the epidural mm -hmm. okay great so if I don't go for epidural and I do want to do a natural birth you mentioned that we could still have some pain management options can you tell me what are those options Another pain management option that we are able to offer women at some facilities is nitrous oxide. So this is an inhaled gas um, of uh, nitrogen and oxygen that um, a woman is able to self-administer via mm -hmm. a mask. Um, so no one else is able to do this for her. No okay. support person, nursing staff. The woman has to be able to do it herself. Um, and she's able just to put the mask over her nose and mouth, inhale through and exhale through this mask. Okay. And what this does, it's kind of a halfway point between that epidural and that IV pain medication. Okay. Um, it, it releases the body's natural endorphins, the dopamine, and is able to really help them just kind of relax and not care as much during that process. There mm -hmm. are some women that we don't recommend nitrous oxide for, um, but we are able to review all of those uh, with them during the pregnancy or before they are in labor um, if it is not recommended. Um, but it is a great option. Uh, there are some women that don't do well with it. However, sure. the majority of the patients that I've had have really um, done well with the, nit the nitrous oxide. Um, and I, I really offer this option a lot to them because I think it, it does a great job at helping support them and be able to continue through that process of um, natural birth um, and having a vaginal delivery. Another way I do like to use nitrous oxide though is um, if there is any vaginal laceration or any repair is needed, mm. nitrous oxide is a great option. So for after birth? Yes, when so after the birth, okay, yes. if they require repair, um, they are able to inhale this, this um, nice nurse oxide and able to get some pain relief um, if they have gone without an epidural. So sure. obviously the um, pain is gonna be a little um, intensified during that repair. So that's a great way yeah. to help them have some pain relief. Is there a limit on that or you just yep. use it yep. every time so you as feel soon pain? As they yep, as soon as they the contraction starts, and women figure oh. this out real quick. What the <laughs> si what How the long it actually Yeah, lasts. what the system is. So <laughs> it's coming, they'll grab their mask, right. inhale, exhale, and as soon as they take it off, it, expel, it exhales out of the body, so there's no lingering effects. Oh, so that's the great okay. part of it. Is this the same thing as a dentist's office? Basically. Like yeah. the laughing gas? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Laughing that's gas. what some people call it. Okay. So. <laughs> but uh, I don't think they're it's actually laughing. Either. It's okay. not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so what if do you ever have <laughs> like a, a mom that comes in and she wants to do a natural birth and she's going through it and all of a sudden she just can't handle the pain mm -hmm. and she changes her mind and if she does that is there something in place where you can give her epidural last minute absolutely okay. so you know I tell women like none of this is in stone yeah. you know this is these are your options and that's why I highly encourage all of my moms to take childbirth education yes. this is able to help them understand the whole birth process from start to finish um, what their options are mm -hmm. and then if we ever need to deviate from that plan we're going to help we're going to work together in sure. that shared decision making sure. to figure out what the best option is i like to tell um women when i go in at the beginning of their labor okay you're the boss i'm bossy but <laughs> yeah. you're the boss you're the boss. <laughs> you're the boss you're the boss so what it is you know what are your pain minute you know what are you what is your birth plan you sure. know um what is your birth plan for this and when i'm able to find out what their birth plan i can fully support them i say oftentimes you know i'm not going to offer that epidural in terms of saying are you ready for an epidural now right, right. i'm going to wait for her to tell to me that for mm -hmm, sure, to ask for sure. it and that really is um a great part of the process is understanding and able to really watch them how they're coping. Sometimes a mom may not ask for it, but I can see she's not coping as well. She's yeah. not advancing in dilation as much. Sure. And um, medically, sometimes we recommend an epidural. Okay. If there are reasons pre-pregnancy, um, if there's something during the pregnancy that arises that we would recommend an epidural, or during the labor, mm -hmm. um, there might be a reason we medically recommend sure. an epidural. Sure. But if a mom decides that she's not wanting to go um, without any medication, we start with that IV pain medication if she would like, sure. that water immersion if possible. Right. Um, 
And then if not, we can definitely get the epidural whenever okay. she, is, she is ready. I tell women there's really not a time that's too late okay. unless the head's actually coming out. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question so. was this because my friend was going to get an epidural and we mm -hmm. went to Fairview Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was like eight centimeters and mm -hmm. they were like, sorry, you're going to mm -hmm. start pushing. Isn't there like a certain centimeter once you reach it, we should not be giving epidural? Or So I don't, I don't like to tell women that there's a certain centimeter okay. um, unless someone is actively feeling the pressure to push sure. um, that would be a time that would be more unsafe because you have to sit up at the bedside to be able to have the epidural place right, right. Um, so I don't technically like to put that centimeter sure. on there 10 centimeters is complete dilation prior to them actually Ten pushing is, mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah but um, typically I don't like to give a number because everybody's really different right. I have had patients get an epidural at 10 centimeters because oh, wow. um, you know they didn't feel the pressure to push um, nothing was really happening uh, right there sure and so they've had to get it at that point that's okay. not common right. um, however um, typically I would say women get it anywhere between six and eight centimeters so what happens if the baby uh, ends up being breech so if the baby is breech um, normally we like to find this out during the pregnancy right. um, it's something that if we are able to find this out we're able to help midwives can help um, or physicians can help women um, have certain techniques or things to do to help the baby turn while they are still pregnant um, different techniques I recommend for women is to see a chiropractor um, oh. a huge part of the management to help um, kind of relax that pelvis yeah. get it in the optimal position so then baby is able to rotate um, there are stretching and exercise techniques okay. breach techniques that we can have women do to help and then some old midwives tales uh, some things that we can help women um, do as well to help baby turn and for babies for a mom that this is just naturally how her body um, is with this pregnancy and sure. the baby is not turning then we're able to um, refer the patient to the physician mm -hmm. to complete a cesarean section um, because okay. that is the safest way um, to deliver uh, with a breech presentation great okay great <laughs> all right so sometimes you plan you know your whole nine months you're planning a natural birth and um things don't go as par and you end up having some kind of medical emergency can mm -hmm. we talk about as a mom coming to the hospital if my blood pressure is out of whack and then all of a sudden everything has to change can we talk about what happens next absolutely and that is one of those times where midw midwives are able to um get involved with the collaborating physician. Sure. And that's where that standard right. care arrangement for us is a great part because now we become a part of a collaborative team. Right. Um, so when something medical arises, midwives are specialized in low risk pregnancies, l in normal pregnancies. So when something becomes more high risk, there are certain conditions that we're able to still be involved with the care of okay. the patient. Um, high blood pressure for some is a part of that. Um, so we are able to consult or collaborate with our collaborative physician and come up with the best care for that patient. Okay. So I really try and encourage moms that even when things don't go as planned, you know, um, the best thing is that we wanna make sure all of the um, physical, emotional, spiritual needs are met for that mom and that everyone is safe for the mom the baby um, and along all of those different spectrums sure. of care um, the collaborative physician um, then is able to help make recommendations for us um, if needed if something becomes high risk we have the nursing staff to help support the mother um, different hospitals will have a uh, neonatal team or a um, neonatal physician on staff to help sure. if anything was needed for the baby right. um, and then our physicians are able to um, help as well some hospitals um, do not have physicians in the hospital themselves so oh, okay. as a midwife i'm able to attend births um, th attend the births of women uh, and the physician is not in the hospital with me yeah. um, however if a problem arises they are able to come in and help okay. during great. those times um, for midwives, we don't perform like a vacuum extraction. Um, if there needs a va um, an assisted vaginal delivery, um, the physician is able to help with a vacuum extraction. You have to tell me what a vacuum extraction so is. So vacuum no extraction <laughs> is, yeah. So basically, it's like a little suction cup that goes on the top of the baby's head. Okay. So sometimes medically indicated that we are able to help the baby mm. kind of come through the birth canal. It doesn't do the work. Mom still yeah. has to help. Yeah. But the physician is able to help guide baby through the birth canal a little bit, which okay. is a little bit of pressure. Sure. So sure. that helps or forceps um, for those who are trained in forceps mm -hmm. um, basically are a metal device that can go around the baby's head to help assist the mother in pulling the baby out of the vaginal canal oh, okay are these the same kind of <laughs> um, tools are used if the baby is not uh, head down or no? that would be different that that's would be different. a cesarean section oh okay that's so that's, no, that's a c-section no, okay, a c -section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but the assisted um, 
the the forceps or the vacuum is one vacuum. Okay. one way that we are able to help that woman have the vaginal birth okay. um, as well. And then the physicians join in on that. Sure. Um, and then if a woman would need a C-section, mm -hmm. the physicians are able to take over the management of the patient okay. and complete the, c the cesarean section okay. if needed. Now, some midwives are trained to actually assist with cesarean sections as well. Sure. So they're able to still kind of be involved in that care. Um, and then other times our role turns to supportive. So we aren't yeah. actively involved in the management any longer, but we're still able to support the support the women during. Sometimes that is all you need. Exactly. <laughs> and I will say I'm so blessed because the physicians that we work with yes. are so supportive of midwifery care. And um, it's not like uh, when they when they come to assist or um, take over management of the patient that we're kind of just pushed out of the right, way. Right. Like we're able still su to support and still be a part of that sure. team. And that's really such a beautiful part of that the is. collaborative teamwork. That of is. It. Can you tell me what the difference is between a uh, doula versus a midwife? So a doula versus a midwife, and what the difference is, and sometimes this does get confused, um, that was another question, is it, it gets confused that a doula and a midwife are the same thing, but mm -hmm. we're actually really different, but similar. Yeah. So in some of the things that we do. So with doulas, they are non-clinical professionals. So they are not able to offer any medical mm -hmm. advice, they cannot prescribe any medications, um, and they don't deliver the baby. Mm -hmm. However, they are an amazing support person for the mom and her partner um, during the labor, um, sometimes during the pregnancy and postpartum for like childbirth education sure. or follow-up support in the postpartum period for mom. Um, doulas offer continuous labor support, so they're able to help them cope during labor, coach them, offer those breathing techniques, sure. different positional changes, um, able to provide relaxation um, during that process, during pushing. Um, so they're a great support, and research actually really encourages um, doulas because it helps prevent cesarean sections and mm. promotes vaginal delivery. So that's a great, um, a great part of the doula being a part of that team. Um, midwives, like we had discussed, you know, that's part of our role too, is sure. we offer that continuous labor support, but in areas where it may be a collaborative practice, where physicians um, and midwives work together, where a midwife not, might not always be available, um, you know, a doula is a great option in those settings. So a doula well. is a great option for like mental, <coughs> emotional support? Absolutely. Can you do a doula and a midwife? Absolutely. Oh, okay. I've worked, exactly. <laughs> so I've worked great with, doula, I've worked alongside doulas and it's kind of nice because we're able to kind of share yeah share that right, load. Right. Um, we might both have different offerings so yeah so I have worked alongside um, doulas as well so how does someone uh, get a doula so a doula is someone that a um, a woman and her partner um, or support person is able to get on their own outside of the hospital facility normally doulas are not um, on the staff of the hospital or in the practice itself. So they're able to re research this option on their own. Mm -hmm. um, some of my patients will interview a couple of different doulas yeah. and find which one that um, is most aligned with their desires or their wishes and um, that they click with the best sure. um, that they will enjoy having at their labor birth. So this is definitely someone that is outside of the medical um, portion of their care. Great. Yeah. So then after the patient um, uh, delivers mm -hmm. the baby, um, then they see you as like a six week uh, appointment, kind of like the same yeah. thing as a physician, they would come see you, yep. correct? Yep, okay. they would okay. see us for their postpartum visit. And at that visit, we talk about birth control, we talk about um, how their breastfeeding is going or bottle feeding, if that's what they have chosen. Mm -hmm. We talk about emotional, um, yes. you know, how emotionally things have been going. Are they sleeping okay? Um, any bowel or bladder problems? Um, you know, postpartum bleeding, has that been normal for them? Sure. And then what are their plans for future family planning? You right. know, we're able to discuss how long they're wanting to have family space Sure. Um, in between. So a lot of discussion. Yeah, that yeah visit. there's a lot. <laughs> and so usually I like them to bring the babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely want to see the baby for sure. I feel gypped. <laughs> yes. <you> know, so. <laughs> so as a midwife, what are the most common questions that you get from mothers? So honestly, mm -hmm. when I have... Um, Patients come in uh, during the pregnancy. Um, normally, I the questions that I get are, do you do home birth? Uh, so that's something. You? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so actually, most midwives in the United States, um, United States attend births in the hospital. Oh, so that's kind of okay. a mis misconception sure. of what our role actually is. Yeah. And so that's something that I tell them, no, actually, we deliver um, certified nurse midwives are able to deliver in the hospital setting. Sure. So then they're like, oh. Well, I might want a midwife. <laughs> so then we talk about that yeah. that part of it. So I get that question a lot. Um, another question I get is, well, I really don't want a natural birth. Yeah. I want an epidural. Can I 
still have an epidural if I see a midwife? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so I can still get a midwife and epidural. Exactly. Can I have best of both worlds? And absolutely they can. Oh, okay. And so for me, um, having a midwife and still wanting the epidural, I will encourage them. Like, I really recommend holding off on getting that epidural until labor is well established. Sure. Um, you know, you're kind of on that threshold of being able to cope with the pain um, and able to support them in that decision, too. Sure, sure. Um, so, yes. If, you <laughs> have, if you're wanting an epidural, you can still have a midwife. That's and we can excellent. support you that way. That's excellent. Um, so those are probably the questions. The, okay. That you get. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, I mean, we're kind of running out of time, but is there anything else that you would tell our viewers or listeners um, if they are thinking about natural birth versus epidural, where to go? Someone maybe like me that would have been scared. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you would tell our audience? Yeah, so when we look at natural birth versus an epidural, I just really encourage women um, to get that childbirth education to help them decide what the best option for them is. Um, and that can actually help really promote um, their decision making. Sure. And for natural birth, it honestly, our bodies are designed to do this. Yeah. It's a natural physiological process. Yeah. And natural birth is so empowering and you can totally do this. Yeah. Um, it's a mindset going in, knowing those coping techniques, having good coaches by your side, knowing the process, preparing, that really is the key yeah, to natural definitely. birth is preparation. Yeah. And then if we have to deviate from that plan, we're still by your side, helping yes. support you, help make those decisions, share decision making, and getting to the end goal. That's really assuring to know that even yeah. if I end up going epidural, even yes. if I end up anything and you're still by my side, yeah. it's very comforting. And thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank and you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Sure thing. And for more information about midwifery, please visit clevelandclinic.org slash midwife. And make sure you check us out um, on other interviews for practical health advice from Cleveland Clinic experts on our Health Essentials podcast. And for more health tips and information from Cleveland Clinic, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Cleveland Clinic, one word. Thank you so much much for tuning in.